I've taught and taught that my kingdom is not of this world. Never will be of this world. And yet there's people out there teaching that God's going to come and set up an earthly kingdom on this earth. You know what? There is absolutely no Bible for that whatsoever. You cannot find Bible for that because my Lord plainly spoke and said my kingdom is not of this world. What is His kingdom? We are in His kingdom tonight. We were worshiping in His kingdom tonight and His kingdom is the church. It's a spiritual kingdom. One that you can't see. And it's through the blood of Jesus Christ that the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. And upon the veil of that temple was embroidered two cherubims. What did them cherubims do? Them cherubims that were embroidered upon the veil of the temple barred man from going into the presence of God. Into the holies of holies. And when that veil was rent from top to bottom, them cherubims were separated that blocked the entrance to the Garden of Eden. And what the first man, Adam, lost, the second man, Adam, Jesus Christ, made way back into the garden once again. That's why it's so important to come to an altar of repentance and crucify this old man of flesh. This old man of flesh is the same one that talked to Eve in the garden and deceived Eve in the garden. And we have got to constantly come to a place where we keep this old man of flesh under subjection to God. We've got to constantly crucify this old man of flesh or it'll rise back up and the serpent will begin to talk to us once again just as it did to Eve in the garden. That's right. Am I making sense? Yes, sir, Come on. The story of the garden was a relationship with God. And old sinful flesh begin to just have its own desires and it begin to rise up. And because of the sinful desires of, of the flesh, I want you to know that today it will still separate you from the presence of God just like it did Adam and Eve. If we do not bring it to a place of repentance and crucify this old man of flesh. These creeping things that Peter saw was the Gentiles. And the Gentiles were heathen. They didn't have God. And God was trying to prepare Peter to take this gospel message to the heathen that followed after the lustful desires of the serpent, of this sinful flesh. They were creeping things that crept on the dust and ate of the dust. Now the dust is not... The dust that we dust off of our ceiling fans. Them ceiling fans are amazing things. They, you can get up on top and I don't know what it is about them, but they build up a layer of dust on the top of them ceiling fans. This is not the type of dust that it's talking about. Dust is filthy. Dust is disgusting. I don't mind getting dirt on me. But there's something about dust that's different than dirt. It feels yucky. And you know what? The things of the world, the sins that are out there tonight, are the same way. They're nothing but dust. They feel yucky. And you can't get it off. If you'd like to turn to the book of Revelation. Now you've probably never heard a creation story that started out in creation in Genesis. And now we're in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 12. In verse 15.
Let's back up to verse 14. And to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness into her place where she is nourished for times and times a half and time. From the face of the serpent and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away of the flood. We can read in the book of Revelations and Revelations 1 and 1. It starts out and says this is a revelation of Jesus Christ. People have got the book of Revelations being a book of horror, of fear, and trembling. But the first verse in Revelation says it's a revelation of Jesus Christ. And as Jesus Christ, all the things that people talk about today, it's not a revelation of Antichrist. You'll not find the word Antichrist one time in the book of Revelation. To be such an important, fundamental doctrine of quote, quote, Christians today. You would think as important of a place that people put Antichrist having in the book of Revelation that at least it would mention him once. You know why it doesn't mention him in the book of Revelations? Because it's not a revelation of the Antichrist. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. It's a revelation of Jesus Christ. Who tried to destroy Jesus Christ? Revelations 12 said the serpent. But the real ones were those of human nature that stood back there and cried, crucify him. Crucify him. Crucify him. Those were the real ones that tried to sweep him away. They hung him upon a cross and began to mock him and said, Now come down from there and and save yourself. And it was there hanging upon that cross that the soldier come by and pierced his side. And just as Adam had a rib removed from his side and Eve was created from the side of Jesus Christ there was born a church there was another woman created just as in the garden there was a woman created for Adam when the rib was removed from his side when the soldier pierced the side of Jesus from the second man Adam Another woman was created. And I want you to know tonight that that woman is the church. That woman is the church. You see from the very book of Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1 all the way to the last verse in the book of Revelation. This word of God is simply about a walk with God. It's simply about man's walk with God. There's warnings given that we can lose that walk with God. Once saved, always saved was right. Adam and Eve would have never lost their walk with God. But when they let sin enter in and they begin to follow after the fleshly desires and they begin to listen to the wrong voice, they lost their walk with God.